Oduma Pigay of Le Brassus, the brand alongside Patek Philippe and Vacheron Constantin, regarded by many in the watch community as the holy trinity of watchmaking. And today we will look into the watch that shaped and defined the future of Oduma Pigay, the Royal Oak. And it all began in April of 1970 when the then managing director Georges Goulet made a phone call to his partner, a trained jeweler by the name of Gerald Genta. And it goes like this: Mr. Genta, we have a distribution company that has asked us for a steel sports watch that has never been done before. Oh, and one more thing: I need the design sketch for tomorrow morning. And the rest, as they say, is history. That was just a quick summary of the origin of the Royal Oak. If you guys like this kind of content, remember to like and subscribe. If you guys are already subscribed, thank you very much. And without further ado, let's head on to the boutique. Taking a look inside the boutique, and I'll be honest, I was more nervous than I usually am when I was inside this boutique. Not really sure why, but unlike other boutiques, you actually have to make an appointment if you plan to make a visit. And even with Patek and Vacheron, which I've visited before, uh, you can usually just walk in and they will still entertain you. But when I was inside this boutique, there were a few people that tried to walk in without any prior appointment, and they were denied entry by the door. So remember to make your appointment first. And my friend did the appointment as he is planning to register interest on a few pieces, which we will take a look soon. Yeah, it the big we will start off with the core models of each of the collection. We have the Code 1159, the Royal Oak Offshore, and lastly, the exquisite, the iconic, the Royal Oak Jumbo Extra Thin. We have to start off with the Royal Oak Jumbo Extra Thin, reference number 16202ST. And this is the closest living relative of the original Royal Oak Jumbo reference number 5402 ST. This latest version of the Royal Oak Jumbo was released last year. And now for the first time, the Royal Oak Jumbo features a full in-house movement, caliber 7121. The previous version, the 15202 ST, uses the same movement as the original Royal Oak, caliber 2121 from Jeje Lecoq. And if you guys were wondering how Jeje Leco got his name, the watchmaker's watchmaker, and this is one of the many reasons why, as the Caliber 2121 was only used exclusively with Patek, AP, and Vacheron. This is possibly the best wrist roll you can get from any watch. The bracelet is as iconic as the whole design of the watch. The octagonal bezel was inspired by a sea diver's helmet with eight exposed screws and the dial has a petite tapisserie pattern. Yeah, the yeah, next yeah. evolution of the Royal Oak came in 1989 when oh, yeah, Odoma yeah. Piguet designer Emmanuel yeah. Gate presented a sketch of a more robust Royal Oak. However, Gerald Genta was not happy. He felt that this was an abomination to his masterpiece in 1972. Despite the criticism, the beast as it was aptly named was released in 1993. Coming in at 42mm and 15cm thick, you can see why this Royal Oak Offshore was nicknamed the Beast. This latest version is also the closest living relative to the original Offshore. Continuing on with the Offshore lineup, this one is in 43mm and titanium. This one is also a little bit thinner at 14.4mm, so the titanium helps in the wearability of the watch. And also this one comes in a strap instead of a bracelet. So this one is definitely for people with a smaller wrist. But overall, this is definitely a solid and robust watch compared to the Royal Oak. Moving on to the Code 1159. And with this collection, it's either you love it or you don't. And it's similar to that of Omega's Constellation lineup, where you don't really know where the collection stands and which direction it's going to. And Oduma Pigay did release a new set of Code 1159s in stainless steel and that one comes with index hour markers and also a guilloche dial. 
So that one I think looks a little bit better. That one yeah. seems promising. They didn't have it in stores yeah, when I visited them. But uh, let me know if you want me to visit AP again <laughs> and try on the new ones when they have it. In. But this version that I'm holding is a no for me. And now let's take a look at some of the pieces that my friend has put his interest in. Starting with this beautiful Royal Oak Offshore in a baby blue shade. And I think this shade of color will always be popular no matter what watch it is. You have seen it in a, the Tissot PRX and now this Royal Oak Offshore. And it's a really nice summer color and really bright and playful. 42 millimeters in stainless steel and he has been told that this would be a bit of a longer wait compared to other offshores because of the obvious popular color. Next up on his interest list is this 41 millimeters Royal Oak reference number 15510 yeah. ST and he is interested in the black dial. The white dial is the least popular color while blue being the most desired. And this one has a thickness of 10.5 millimeters, which is still thin considering, but you can see how dramatically thin the Royal Oak Jumbo is at 8.1 millimeters. Side by side comparison of the white dial versus the black one. And I think the black dial is the clear winner here. Uh, let me know which one you guys prefer. And last but not least, I definitely have to try on a Royal Oak Chronograph. This one is in 41 millimeters with a thickness of 12.4 millimeters. You can see the finishing of the bracelet and the case and how it plays with the light. I think in natural lighting, this would look exceptionally well. On the wrist, this wears a little bit bigger than its stated 41 millimeters. And my 6.5 inch or 16.5 centimeters circumference wrist. Uh, this one definitely looks and feels a little bit big. This one retails at 54500 for a steel sports watch with a chronograph function, which in my opinion is still a lot. And that is at retail if you can get one. One final wrist roll with the Royal Oak Jumbo. And I still can't get over how slim this watch is and how it wears on the wrist. I think it has quickly become my grail watch as of now. Uh, but anyway, one final look at the watches that we have tried on and around the boutique. Let me know if you want me to go back to the boutique and try on any watches that you see. And yeah, if you guys like this kind of content, remember to like and subscribe. And we are almost at a thousand subscribers. So definitely keep liking and sharing and commenting. And thank you all for the support. And I will see you on the next one. Take care, guys.